Just to say it again, they have to work together. You have to be hitting on all three of these. If one of them breaks down, as we've seen in our own personal experience, as one breaks down, it's like a domino effect. If my physical's bad and I'm, I'm tired and I'm not taking care of my body, I stop reading my Bible. I stop spending time with the Lord. I stop meditating. Then the spiritual starts to break down and then the mental starts to break down and you get this flywheel effect. <music>
Um, and then thirdly, and probably the most important in, in stress reduction, at least for us, is the spiritual side of your life. Mm-hmm. And, and having a healthy spiritual life, having a healthy faith that can absolutely give you a, a bedrock grounding of a place to, to uh, anchor your, your emotions to and anchor um, your, the outlook you have on your business to. And so that spiritual side seems like, obviously, we have that in common, and, and is, it plays a huge role in our ability to manage stress and anxiety and, and be okay with the outcomes of our business. So I know um, probably in our dialogues, like it seems like I, 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 w- I think you probably have the, the, the most research, the most experience on the physical side of managing stress. And so, I mean, it might be good for you to start there, uh, maybe for our viewers and unpack, like, what are you finding that works? I mean, what, what's been helpful for you on the, on the physical side of things? Because just to say it again, they have to work together. You have to be hitting on all three of these. If one of them breaks down, as we've seen in our own personal experience, as one breaks down, it's like a domino effect. If my physical's bad and I'm, I'm tired and I'm not taking care of my body, I stop reading my Bible. I stop spending time with the Lord. I stop meditating. Then the spiritual starts to break down and then the mental starts to break down and you get this flywheel effect. So anyway, um, so in your experience, like maintaining that physical side, maybe just like what's been working? Yeah. For, so for me personally, um, what I've found works is... So, so the first thing I would say is creating a, a routine. And as a business owner, you are naturally loaded down with lots. Your calendar is usually super full. You're super busy. And um, that's certainly the case for me. And so the physical, taking care of yourself physically often falls to the wayside or on the back burner. Um, and in order to combat that, I think you need to find a way to fit it into your day and do that regularly and create sort of a rule around that. Like I'm not going to, I'm not going to miss this, this, um, thing I've set aside. And, and I was going to say workout, but it could be a, it could be a number of different things. It could be working out. It could be going for a walk, regardless of what it is. The point is, is I, I have found that if you schedule it, um, literally I schedule it on my work calendar, just like I would a meeting or anything else important. Um, I schedule it there and then I make it into a routine by not breaking that promise to myself. I just make sure that I'm showing up for that. I'm not scheduling something over that because I think it's like a negotiable thing. And so that's probably the number one, um, piece of advice I would give. That's the number one thing that's worked for me. And because you're a business owner, hopefully you have um, some flexibility around your how you want to schedule your day. So find the time that's most convenient and is easiest for you too, so that you don't feel tempted to um, replace that, that slot with something else. And then secondly would be focusing on my, my diet, I think is, is a big piece of this that might end up getting missed. If you, if you fit in some form of, you know, getting active, but you're eating at McDonald's for lunch every day, which business owners can fall into that trap really quickly because we want stuff quick and on the go. Um, and it's kind of easy to just fall into that routine of eating out and then eating poorly. But if you prioritize, um, your diet by, meal prepping or just choosing better options when you go out to eat. Um, I find that it makes it for one, a lot easier to, to hit the gym. Um, cause if I'm ingesting a bunch of bad food, I feel like crap and then I don't want to do it even more. So, um, but then secondly, it really amplifies the effects of taking care of yourself physically. Um, if I'm eating well, then I, I feel like that's uh, an accelerant for the effect I'm getting from, from working out. Yeah, they, they say like what, you know, 80% of physical fitness or 80% of your health is diet. If you, you know, in your regiment, 80, 20 or whatever. Yeah. That's what I've heard as well is if you're talking about anything having to do with your, your physical health, any kind of goal you might have, like 20% of it is the movement or going to the gym and yeah, 80% of it is your nutrition. So yeah. arguably your nutrition is, is even more important. Yeah. I love what you're saying about routine because routine is critical. I mean, like, uh, what's the Jocko 
is it a Jocko book? It's like discipline equals freedom. Yeah. <laughs> and a, and, and I think one. there's so much truth in that. And so, so many people complain about, oh, I'm stressed out. Oh, I'm tired. Oh, I'm, and then you start breaking their life down and it's an undisciplined circus. Mm-hmm. And it's like, well, you don't have discipline. You don't have routine. How are you going to ever manage your anxiety and your mental health and, and have time to get to have a spiritual life and have time for your wife when your life is chaos? So I just think routine is, I love what you said there, because it's just like such an antidote for so many things is just being in routine. And how do you maintain routine is like, you will do the things that matter to you, right? You'll mm. hold that time slot in your in your calendar for something that's really critical and important. So upping the appreciation and the value for that, that time where you exert yourself physically, if you up that in your mind and you value it and you appreciate it and you, and you really categorize it for what it is, which is a critical component to business success, yep. you will find that time. If I work out, if I get on my mountain bike, if I go for that walk, I'm actually gonna be more successful in business. If you categorize it that way, then you're more apt to like hold that time slot, but you have to see it that way. And you have to actually believe that. Totally, man. Well, I think you can, I think you can easily feel guilty about setting time aside for yourself. Right. And if you don't do a little bit of the work to, to convince yourself and to, to believe for yourself that that time is necessary and it will ultimately benefit the people around you that you're leading in your business, then then you're way less likely to do it. Yeah, 100%. I would agree. I have one of the most highest revenue products I have ever conceived of was conceived on my mountain bike. Really? On, Sage Hills Trail, on the Sage Hills Trail system. Really? Yeah, for real. It's just like, that used to be mountain biking for me was so therapeutic. And man, my, my brain would just like, 10, 15 minutes into the trail, you just start thinking, hmm. you know, you're just like all this stuff's just coming out and you start, all the endorphins start running. And like, and I'm like, I'm, I'm, I'm like twice as smart on my mountain bike <laughs> than, I, than I am sitting in my office. Like no, I believe that dude, yeah, like the mental clarity. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I mean, if you struggle, if you're a business owner it, it, and you struggle with mental clarity, which sucks when you're a business owner oh, and man. you're trying to be a leader, if you struggle with that, couldn't implore you enough to focus on this area. Like yep. if you're feeling that I, it's, it probably is a result of stress, but it's, it can be combated. Like it doesn't, it doesn't just need to be or the, not the only way to resolve it um, is going to come from from reducing stress. Like there is a way to reduce it in the face of stress, and it's totally the physical side of things. Yeah, hundred percent. The mental man. clarity is is probably one of the biggest benefits I've I've felt with focusing on the physical health side of this. Yeah, yeah. So okay, let's move on. Yeah, the, okay. Yeah, the the other two, mental and spiritual. I I'm going to kick mental your way since you asked me what yep. are some of my strategies for taking care of myself physically. Yeah. I feel like you, um, as of recent have been helping guide me in some of the, the mental health exercises and routines you've implemented. So yeah. can you talk about some of the things you've done? <clears throat> yeah, for sure. So the mental side is often, I think, uh, I think sometimes mental health in America or in society is sometimes, um, uh, viewed as like almost with like a victim mentality, like, well, my mental health is what it is. My, my mental state is what it is. If I have anxiety, it's not my fault. If I'm depressed, it's not my fault. But there are tools, there are handles you can grab onto for your mental health and take control of your mental health. And you can, and there are things you can do to not just let your mental health be what it is or how I feel in the morning is how I feel. And so there, I, I think there's some really good um, in the moment tools that, that can be incredibly beneficial like during the day, during literally during your work hour. And so two of those things would be breathing exercises. And then the second one would be, um, some type of meditation. And I'm not promoting like Yogi new age crap. This is not what we're talking about. We're talking about scientifically backed, um, physiologically affecting physiological affecting exercises here that can actually affect your mental health. I watched a Huberman episode on this and, and the breathing exercises go and watch it by the way, he Mm. does a whole thing on breathing and it's really amazing. Like the, um, um, what's the, uh, what's the term for it? It's the one where you breathe in really deeply and exhale very, very slowly. It's a physiological sigh mm. is what they call it. And that has a, a, a physiologically or a scientifically proven physiological effect on adrenaline levels. Hmm. Um, and so is that, that where you breathe in double, you double breathe in <laughs> through your nose. Yeah. 
and then you let out really slowly. And what happens there is it's affecting the, literally affecting the diaphragm muscle and the compre- and, the, and how much space is left over in your chest cavity for your heart. Hmm. And your body regulates adrenaline based on the amount of space it has for the heart to beat because it's trying to achieve the same beats per minute based on, but, but there's pressure inside the chest cavity that has to like put more emphasis into beating harder or slow down when the chest cavity has more space in it. I might be butchering this scientifically, but it's go listen to Huberman. It's close to that. Yeah. So this is a real world deal. You get off the call, you had a bad sales call, you had a bad meeting with your board, or you're right about to or have a board meeting. Something. Yeah. Adrenaline's up. Physiological sigh can absolutely help calm you, can absolutely help reduce stress. And, and there, you can do it multiple times a day. Another one is meditation. So I actually use a Christian meditation app. Um, app, app. Mm. and I find it incredibly beneficial. It literally only takes 10 or 15 minutes. Sometimes I'll just shut off the lights in my office, block my door, whatever, and I'll kick that app on and I, and I begin to meditate. And man, oh man, dude, you want to get your heart rate down. You want to get adrenaline levels down and you want, which are huge in terms of like long, a long-term effect of stress on your body, on your mental state, on your anxiety. Mm-hmm. And if you're doing these things during the day regularly, you can actively and aggressively go after your stress and your, and your, and the, the amount of anxiety you're having in your day. Another one is, I would say, um, sleep. Sleep is huge. There's another Huberman episode. Everything in your body is, is uh, tied to your sleep cycles and your cortisol levels as they come up and down and, and the different uh, hormones that are being affected by sleep. Sleep is unbelievably important in setting and regulating so many things in your body. Mental health is 100% tied to sleep. If you're anxious all the time, you're probably not getting good sleep. And then if you get good sleep, you'll find that it helps your, 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 your mental state. Mm -hmm. So breathing exercises, meditation, good sleep habits. And then I would say supplements. There's absolutely supplements Mm -hmm. out there such as, um, L-theanine, magnesium. Um, uh, what's the other one? I'm going to lose it now. Oh, ashwagandha, like Mm -hmm. adaptogens, things like that. Those supplements can be really impactful on sleep. Sleep's important, as we just said, and absolutely help reduce anxiety. Um, and, and, and in those things, you can take control of your mental health state. You're not a victim to how your brain is telling you to feel. So th- th- those are some things I would say I've, been, I've used throughout the course of my business career to, to keep a handle on that, on that mental, mental piece of the flywheel. Because yep. if that breaks down and I'm depressed or I'm anxious, I'm not going to work out or I'm not going to read or I'm not going to pray. And I'm then I'm not going to, I mean, it's just like this total just like, domino, effect. total domino. So yeah. And that, and, and feeling and fee, and the ability to feel calm as a business owner in the middle of the day, um, is a powerful tool because all of us that lead others want to be able to find that mental state where we can make good decisions. Yes. We want to be in a place at least business owners like you and I, we want to be in a place where we positively affect the people we're leading, where we are embodying the character that we want to embody. We're embodying the values that we've told people we we value through our company values. And all of that is really hard to do if you're in a whacked out mental state. And so I like that. I, I like the tip, um, even breaking out meditation app in the middle of the day, which might not be intuitive. You can take care of your mental health even in the middle of the day yep. between meetings. Yeah. So I think that's cool. Yeah. I, I love what you're saying too about leadership. Like people, great people want to follow great leaders. And yeah. I don't know. You a told lot of, me, you talked to me about that, about the hiring process of executives. Yes. Actually attracting good people to, right. attracting, to work for you. And not just attracting, but retaining good talent comes down to being a strong leader and mm. not just a strong leader, but the right kind of leader, a leadership, a, a leader who's, who embodies character and, and integrity and calmness in the face of adversity. And if you're to use your term whacked out, <laughs> yeah. I, I, you know, it's a lot, a a lot of really term. great people want to stick with their boss. that's whacked out and yeah. you're going to lose people. So it is a really, really important business uh, or b- important aspect of your business is being calm, being a calm leader. Mm, that's so, good. Yeah. So the third, so keep moving us along. Yep. The final is for, for, for uh, the things that Jeff and I focus on to combat this is going to be spiritual and the most important to the both of us. 
Um, uh, I have some thoughts about this too. I know we've just gone one to one, but yeah. do, you, do you want to talk about some of the strategies you've implemented spiritually? Yeah, I can. Yeah. I think we save the best for last because, yeah. um, for those who have a faith and for you and I, we obviously, it's the whole reason we get out of bed in the morning. It's the whole reason we do business. We do yeah. business for the kingdom and, and that, that faith component of our business life could not be overstated in its importance. The faith component uh, and having that identity rooted in knowing who I am as a child of God is the most potent form of of, um, self-reflection and and introspection and consideration to keeping me grounded in my day-to-day uh, business dealings. And in the face of adversity, when you get bad news, when the chips are down, your back's against the corner, knowing that this business ultimately, <laughs> in, the ter- in the scope of eternity, really is not that important, mm. right? And that's right. like, well, that's kind of a big statement. It's not that important. It's like, not in the scope of eternity, it's not. And so having that faith for me having a place to go to, having a, uh, having the ability to pray, to ground myself, to get into the word and to ultimately be okay and be open-handed with the results of my company is incredibly grounding and, and in, in, in incredibly peace giving and anxiety crushing. Yeah. Well, that's the, the, y- your comment about your business in light of eternity and the level of importance is, is kind of my, what, I would say is, is my meta point in terms of strategy around prioritizing the spiritual side of the equation. And that's just consistently, like I have it written down on a sticky note and I have a reminder that pops up in my phone. Um, I set reminders throughout the day and that's just to remind myself constantly that I do value my uh, relationship with God. And I do value, I do value etern- eternity and eternal things more than I value my business. And so if that is the case, then it is, it pretty obviously leads you to, well, if I am going to ensure that there's enough time carved out of my day to get to all my emails or get to that meeting that I was supposed to get to, whatever the thing is that, that, you feel you're responsible for as the leader of the business any given day. If you can make time for that and you prioritize it the way that you do, which is like frantically ensuring that it doesn't get missed, then why would I not be doing the same with something that it can be as simple as, you know, picking up your Bible for five minutes in the morning before you show up to work. Cause it really can be that simple. At least I feel like it can to, to with routine. um, It can be with routine. It can be. Mm -hmm. Yes. And, And I feel like that genuinely has, a positive carrying effect throughout my day. If the difference between reading my Bible for five minutes or just showing up to work and jumping on the first meeting. Yeah. Um, yeah, that's good. I mean, what you do in business is important. Being a kingdom outpost is important. Providing jobs for people is important. Causing the flourishing of those around you is important. Being generous is important. So it is, it is important stuff. Owning a business is a big deal. But when you frame it in the light of who I am as a child of God, who I am in, in, in the scope of eternity, you can get to a place where you can, you can lower the anxiety level. And we can work really hard, right? And we can work really hard unto the Lord. But letting go of the outcome is an incredibly peaceful tool. It's like, Lord, I will do my piece. I will work hard, and then I'm going to give it to you, which is so much of the spiritual life, right? Work hard, do your part, let the Lord do what he's going to do with it. Pray hard, let the Lord determine the outcome. Strategize, try to grow your business, and be okay with what the Lord does with your company. And letting go of that outcome is incredibly powerful. Hey, everybody. Thanks for your interest in the Vertical Business Podcast. If you like what you heard today or you're just interested in all things business, uh, go ahead and hit that subscribe button down below. Turn on bell notifications so you know when we're posting. We're typically posting two times a week, Tuesdays and Thursdays, but you never know when we might not drop uh, a short or something impromptu. Uh, And in addition to uh, on YouTube here, you can also follow us or find us on Spotify as well as Apple Music where we post our, our episodes as well. 
And then lastly, if you uh, want to engage with us outside of the podcast, you can find us on our website at gosparrow.com. Uh, that is where you can subscribe to our newsletter and uh, get access to our other content outside of the Vertical Business Podcast. So we're looking forward to seeing you there.